And I think the losers are Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, because now they own Obamacare. They own it. Yesterday wasn't a victory for the American people. It was a victory for the status quo in Washington, D.C. When I think the president's disappointed in a number of people uh, that he thought were loyal to him that weren't. Plenty of finger pointing to go around these days, but keep in mind that all these parties will have a stake and a say in whatever President Trump decides to do next. And there's no guarantee that the political landscape gets any easier going forward. Joining me now, Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Good to see you, Congressman. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good so morning. You you know better than anyone, your party ran on repeal and replace health care. So what do you do now? Well, I think we move on to the next thing. I mean, I think we have two options here. We move on to tax reform. I think we need to try to reach out to Democrats, at least at the beginning. If Democrats decide they don't want to work with us, that's, that's another issue. But I think there are an, at least maybe a dozen, two dozen people that will be willing to work on tax reform. Maybe more if we tie it with infrastructure. On health care, we have to reach out to Democrats to fix the system now. We ran on repeal, replace for a long time. I think we had a bill that, you know, we can argue about the merits of it. I thought it was pretty good, but it was going to ping point between the Senate and the House and change. But we had a group of 30 people in the House called the House Freedom Caucus uh, that was upset because they didn't get to write the bill. Well, you don't write bills as a caucus. And then, you know, so that's that's where we're at. It didn't go through. They own the loss of the bill. And I think we move forward to the next thing now. You think they own it. You retweeted President Trump's knock on conservatives, uh, who he says saved Obamacare. But is this where the Republican Party is now? You have to reject a pretty significant group and an influential group of your own party and try to make nice with the Democrats? I mean, is this an acknowledgement that the Republican Party is split, is broken? Well, look, I, I think it's important to note there's about 30 of these folks in the House Freedom Caucus. I call them the so-called Freedom Caucus. Uh, there's 200 other members of the House. So we're a very united party, but these folks can deny us the ability to vote in a majority. So we have two choices. We either continue to, to write bills to, to a group of people that is going to never, ever, ever get to yes. I mean, look, they've been in existence for about three years, and every time they have tried to come to the table, they consistently move the goalpost, and they did that on President Trump. They wanted President Trump to repeal pre-existing conditions and kids staying on their health plans until 26. That's where he's definitely not going to go. He ran on that and they knew he wouldn't go there and this was their way to kill the bill. So I think we have two options. Either they're going to have to see the light and understand that governing is a little different than being in opposition or we have to reach out to Democrats because the country needs governing. It doesn't need more of the status quo. I uh, would like a dollar, as most people would, for every time I've heard a member of either party, frankly, congressmen say, we've got to reform Washington. We've got to find a way to work together with the other party. That's what you guys ran on, that Washington was broken, right, and that it needed to be fixed. But how do you do this? How do you do what hasn't been done? And now you have a president who's calling names of the leaders uh, of the Democrat on the Democratic side of the House, the Democrat of the Senate. How do you do what you say you want to do? Well, that's a tough thing. I mean, look, there is a great group of folks in the in the center, center right and center left in the House of Representatives. There's a group called No Labels, which brings those folks together. I'm a part of that. We meet a lot. We're going to have to bring the temperature down. I, now, look, I, I'm not like pie in the sky guy. I don't believe that you're going to stop name calling in Washington or stop all partisanship. And I don't believe we're going to get Nancy Pelosi necessarily involved in our agenda because there's a political implication for that to her. So who will you get? Give me some names of people you've been talking to on the Democratic well, side. Well, no, I'm not, I, I don't want. I don't want to reveal them because they may lose their election if they're talking to me. I don't know, but I will tell you there are dozens of Democrats and there are dozens, if not hundreds, of Republicans that say, "Look, there are big things we." Have to do. There's a lot of us that can agree on infrastructure. There needs to be spending on that and so tax should reform. That maybe Somehow go those first, two can come together. I mean, obviously, I, I when, so now. When, when when the when the talk was about uh, tax reform, you thought there might be a, a, as much as a trillion dollars there that you could then uh, put over into infrastructure. So it, should that be the next thing? Because what we're hearing is tax reform. Can that get done, or are you just going down the same path you went down with health care? 
I guess you don't know till you know, and, and I hope that we're not going down the same path as with health care, with uh, tax reform, because I think there is an opportunity to do things in a bipartisan way. It's not as, tax reform is not as ideological necessarily as health care unfortunately has become. So I think it is important. Let's go with tax reform first. I think we have an opportunity to marry that together with infrastructure. So you look at, you know, Democrats and Republicans who love infrastructure, you marry that together if possible with tax reform, in essence, in one big reform package, I think we may have a real opportunity. But again, we don't know till we begin this process, but you know, I hope we can. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be part of the solution to hope we can get past perpetual partisanship, understanding that, that partisanship will always exist, but try to find some areas where we may be able to work together. Congressman Adam Kinziger, always good to talk to you. Thank you. You too. Anytime. Thanks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.